Taproot Earth is rooted in the Gulf South. We're on the front lines of climate disasters and disasters by extractive industries. On April 20th, 2010, five years after we were recovering from Hurricane Katrina, there was a massive disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. 3.1 million barrels, 300 million gallons of heavy crude oil spilled into the Gulf. And if that wasn't bad enough, BP and the federal government said, let's sink the oil floating on top of the water by spraying toxic dispersants on it. And let's use those toxic dispersants that are banned in Europe for their known cancer causing properties. Let's spray that on South Louisiana. And they set the ocean on fire to burn the oil off. There was a judgment of $20 billion against BP. And some people might think that's a lot of money, but it does not even begin to compensate for the harm to the shrimpers, the fisher folk, our sacred waterways, and particularly the indigenous communities who are excluded from decision-making about their sovereign lands and resources. On April 20th, 2023, Taproot Earth is marking the anniversary of the BP oil drilling disaster with the launch of a Just Transition Lawyering Network. We are building a network of lawyers working to support the Black, Brown, and Indigenous communities and movements leading us towards climate justice and a just transition from an extractive to a living economy and democracy. So I am from a small town on the Texas Gulf Coast called Port Lavaca. Not only do we live in the shadow of a chemical plant like Formosa, and there's several others in Port Lavaca, but many of my family members work at and, you know, hopefully will retire from there. You know, since Port Lavaca is on the coast, I also grew up living in the reality of hurricanes and hurricane evacuations. And so it's like something about this reality of the chemical plants coupled with you know, major hurricanes and major disasters, it, I think it really begins to affect the way that you see the world. You know, the other, the major community that I've worked with for 20 years is the Ua, who were in Colombia, who were really the first community, indigenous community, you know, 25 years ago, who I heard just very plainly, clearly saying, keep it in the ground. The oil needs to stay in the ground. The gas needs to stay in the ground. If we're not doing that successfully as humans, we're not playing the role that we are here to play, which is to restore and maintain the equilibrium of the earth. The blood of the mother earth cannot come out of the earth. They were both saying no to the oil development and saying, and we are committed to getting ourselves out of poverty in a way that has integrity in the context of our rural Colombian existence in the midst of what was then you know, a multi-decade civil war. So that their community too showed showed me the um where how it is that lawyering walking alongside communities that are already leading this work uh, is needed just across the spectrum. How do you define a just transition? So I think a part of just movements requires honoring the history in ourselves and in our environment. Uh, ways uh, to promote alternatives to the um, fossil-dependent, uh, very centralized, undemocratic, uh, colonized electric system that we have here in Puerto Rico. I see a just transition as our shift from extractive to generative um, society, um, and to do so um, in a way that centers justice. Our work should honor our ancestors and the lands that we're protecting, including the sovereignty of those whose land on which we stand. And actively creating space for communities, for people, um, to really create um, local economies. Moving from an extractive economy, extractive of the earth and of its people, to an economy rooted in uh, community and care, regeneration, and deep democracy. How can lawyers support communities and movements at the front lines of the climate crisis? I think we help to open up spaces where communities can participate more in, in a more informed way. Um, and it just generally facilitate uh, community knowledge and uh, work on, on both the impacts of um, climate, the climate crisis and also the solutions and alternatives. 
it's just so important to be rooted in listening to the vision and to the goals of the communities that you're supporting. What it's really shown me is the huge responsibility that we have as attorneys to our communities by virtue of our education and by virtue of our professional you know, license as an attorney. Understand that environmental law is not intended to address the, the concerns that people have, that we all have. Um, it's a blunt, it's a very kind of blunt tool that doesn't, it's, it's not focused on justice in particular. Um, and to be really cogniz cognizant of that um, when, when building a strategy. Who should see themselves as part of the Just Transition Lawyering Network? People who should see uh, themselves as part of the Just Transition Lawyering Network include practicing attorneys who are already doing the doing and who are ready to share out and ready to collaborate more deeply. I hope people like me would see themselves in this work. Um, people like me who work in legal aid, people like me who come from these frontline communities, whose families still live in these communities, um, people like me who are people of color, who are queer. We really need to develop the structures for a more humane and more sustainable future. And we're gonna need all of the folks who have taken that oath to the bar, who have gone to law school, who have really dedicated themselves to a better world to join us. Looking into the future, how do you want the lawyers of the Just Transition Lawyering Network to have shown up in this fight for climate justice? I am excited to know that there are other lawyers out there who wanna do the right thing with this very special and unique profession that we are all a part of. There's room and a role for all of us, whether you're doing policy work, whether you're an organizer, whether you know, you're know you coming from the communities, whether you do legal aid and providing direct services. I want lawyers to have shown up in a way that reflects an understanding that we're all in this together and that um, it's really communities who are leading this fight. So there's this quote I love from the house on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros and one of the aunts tells Esperanza you're going to leave and when you do you need to come back and make sure others can do so also and I think and I think that's most important like in the next three years that we're all going back to our communities and we're making sure that we're bringing other people forward with us. There's this courage to just do it and to give each other support I'm excited for us to build a better world and I look forward to the challenge um, with folks who have been through the rigor of law school and uh, the oath of making a better society through laws. I'm looking forward to working together with everyone. To learn more information and join the Just Transition Lawyering Network, go to taproot.earth backslash JTLN. Hashtag Just Transition Lawyering. What will it take to build a world where we can all live, rest, and thrive in the places we love? Taproot.earth. At Taproot Earth, hashtag we choose now.